Let me close with this. What are some of the goals? We're looking at a significant increase through the pandemic, and hopefully we can see the other side of the pandemic soon. But we get to the other side of this. What are some of the goals? What are some of the hopes, not only for the task force, but with regard to our progress with regard to the opioid crisis? I think that, Bill, you said it up front. Are we going to get back to normal? Uh, to some degree, we are hoping that with a, a higher rate of vaccination in the U.S. and diminished cases and our hospitals being unburdened, that we will get a little bit back to normal and people will be able to get back into the office and back into their counselors for care in a face-to-face manner. And I think that's critical. I don't know when that will happen. It's obviously different in different areas of the country. Vaccination rates are different in different areas of the country. So we're hopeful for a return to normal. Yeah, I think, first of all, like opiate prescribing, as Sean alluded to before, was a huge issue initially. We were clearly over-prescribing. We were giving too many high doses, long-acting opioids, et cetera. And I think we've really been successful over the past 20 years at finally reining that in. In fact, we might have overshot, <laughs> but you know, it's something that we're kind of reducing this iatrogenic cause of opioid addiction, which I think is good. Now is the hard part, right? We need to figure out why people are using drugs in society and how we can treat it. And the, the primary way to do that is to really medicalize it. It's just, it's a disease, right? It's, it's a diagnosable disease. It's a treatable disease. There shouldn't be a stigma around it. It's just something that you know, we have a best practice advisory for when you come in with sepsis. And we have a best practice advisory for when you come in after an overdose. And we have modalities to treat both of those. So as we start to normalize it and make it that, you know, we, we screen patients and we ask them that just along with their travel history, we're able to humanize it and to, to not treat it differently. And I'm hopeful that that eventually will lead to, to more success with treatment and decreased deaths eventually. And, and if I could build on that, take it directly to the opioid task force and its objectives. I wish I could say, or we could say, we saved 2,000 lives in 2021. We'll never be able to say that. But can we say by making information access, leveraging technology easier for those on the front lines, did we save a life? If we can say that, then all the hours that have been put in this will have been worth it. So it's all about for the task force is leveraging technology to get information, to treat, and to prevent opioid addiction. And it's that simple and that difficult. I'll add to that and back up that point. I think we need to acknowledge as IT professionals that IT drives behavior, and there's a lot of power to that. I don't think we can save one life. I think we can save a lot of lives. And we need to step up as leaders, both on the provider side and on the industry side, and acknowledge that position of power and influence and use it and learn from each other, the blueprints. And again, we, we're giving you a place, the Chime Opioid Action Center, where you can go collectively to share that knowledge, to gain knowledge, to interact and, and work together on this. But understand that we can empirically speaking stack rank the interventions that we think have the most impact. And you can do this today bit by bit. You can establish a committee, look at a dashboard, put some EPCS and PDMP in play and do some change management and make an impact starting tomorrow. And we fully feel that you can get lost in a whole lot of things with the opioid epidemic, but focus on IT and what IT can do to change behavior and it will work. 